Yeah, I want to go over a couple of things real briefly right now and um, a couple new things that came up. But before I go, I want people to understand one thing, what's wrong with the monetary system per se. I know the Constitution says the Congress shall have the authority to coin money. And we had bimetallism before. We used to have silver and gold, and in 1873, they went to strictly the gold standard, right? Even though know, there was 90% silver in the coins, it was the gold standard after that, and silver was in the coins up until the end of 1964. Then they had to go put copper in it because silver became too expensive to put in coins, and people were going to melt them down, right? So, that we all know, but... This is something I want to bring and highlight, bring out and highlight, is the fact that the real problem we have where people are against the so-called banksters, and we'll just call them the banksters, the fact that they lo money comes into existence in the form of a loan. And as it comes in the form of a loan, it has to be paid back principal plus interest. And where does the interest come from? It sure doesn't come from the guys that created the loan out of thin air. It comes from out of the sweat equity of the people. People have to produce more to create more wealth, to more GDP, to pay off the interest. Actually, it's impossible to pay off the interest the way things are right now. It's grown so big. So, it's debt slavery. It doesn't matter if it was even, if you actually went to a gold standard, what, what the scam would be, yes, we have a gold standard, and would it say, we're going to lease the gold with interest. And you know who owns all the gold? The central banks. So they still got you that way. What needs to happen, it's not so much that it needs, well, it'd be, but ideally it would be best to go back to more like uh, some type of standard that they won't print too much money. But if that authority was strictly in the hands of the Congress, like printing money, and they're printing, say, fiat dollars or making electronic money, debt-free interest-free. In other words, it comes into existence, it goes right directly into the economy, and it circulates. No interest. No interest at all. That, even if it was paper, would work many, many, many times better than it does today. The fact that money comes to an existence in the form of a loan, and it has interest attached to it, is what's really wrong and that's the scam angle the banksters have. We'll just call them collectively the banksters, you know. Best word to use, right, because that is a racket. I'd love to be able to just create loans out of nothing and have people pay me back the principal, which I'll destroy, and I'll keep the interest, you know, take a fee off the interest, right, as a cut. That'd be perfect setup. So that's the deal they got. Now, I like the idea, I think a lot more, I mean, I use financial institutions, banks, and you know, all that garbage like that, brokerage accounts, but it, the idea of putting most of your money outside those financial institutions actually is a very slick idea. Problem is, most people aren't on with the program. Now, I know that silver is a very high risk asset and all that kind of garbage. It is. It is. It moves up and down, and that's why a lot of wealthy people stay the hell away from it, because... They want to make money, and they want to make money in a nice, safe, conservative way. They're not high-risk rollers. Like a lot of people in the silver crowd are actually high-risk rollers. They are. They really are. Now, um, what I would recommend to the average person to do, this is a safe method. Just buy 10 ounces of silver. Don't go hog wild on it. You know, you pay... You got 10 ounces, you pay, I don't know, 300 bucks or whatever. You get Canadian Maple Leafs. Right now, it's probably about 300 bucks. You figure 27 spot, $3 over spot. If you get an ordinary Canadian Maple Leafs, maybe they were circulated once or something, you know. Those are good coins. They're four nines. I'd recommend those because you're the four nines. And there's another reason. I mean, it is really not that well known that colloidal silver of all the good uses of colloidal silver. I know they like advertising that blue man, but the Canadian maple leaves, you could take one of those Canadian maple leaves, you know, cut it in a long strip or whatever, and make two um, very thick electrodes out of that, and make probably 2,000 gallons of colloidal silver before that thing ran out. 
that's a pretty good price for 30 bucks you know that's about what you would get out of it so I would recommend that people just get 10 ounces of Canadian maple leaves you know I was a little more sold on the American Silver Eagles before and I was tempted to get the uh, maple leaves I wish I did I got some of them not too many but uh, not too many at all actually I got a lot of the different types of coins but uh, anybody in the market right now I think the sales pitch which should be to get the 4.9 silver the Canadian Maple Leafs nothing fancy no wildlife series that's pure speculation they can go up they can go back down who the hell knows they might go up but I would just try to get it as close to spot as possible long term hold but the point is you can also make gazillion gallons of colloidal silver out of a maple leaf and that makes it well worth buying a coin there's no doubt and buying 10 coins is not a big bucks deal now I know a lot of times the average person to blow more money on lunch in a month than they will buying 10 coins they will if they were at work and they're buying if they took lunch to work they would have probably the three hundred dollars difference to buy the coins inside of a month and it wouldn't cost them anything but they won't do it they won't do it actually those type of people I'd rather see them get clobbered anyway so I'm not really interested in saving those type of people anyway they're more about entertainment uh, here and now and all this type of stuff very uh, irresponsible type people now today it looks like I know the silver was down a little bit this morning and it's back you know it's almost flat markets are looking to be opening up pretty soon here I don't know if they probably should be opening now um, well nothing's showing up yet but this is just on Keiko I'm not really too concerned about this uh, what's going on in the markets right now but there was one interesting thing that came out today on Tuesday July 24th 2012 is that they stopped traders in um, from shorting a lot of the bank stocks in Italy and Spain because the markets were going down especially the bank stocks as they're bringing them down and the traders are speculating which is a good bet that they're gonna go to worst as a matter of fact we know since maybe uh, I don't know probably about eight months ago or more probably more like almost a year ago that um, people were pulling money out of Spain and Italian banks and moving it up to like Norway and Luxembourg and Belgium and everything else Germany getting the hell getting their money out of Dodge before everything falls apart but it does take a long time for things to fall apart so you know good news would be if the markets went down <laughs> and the bonds started crashing now I know there's little things going on between China and Russia and uh, United States like in other words there's a push and shove I know Lindsey Williams says the leech says that um, you know watch the big one China I don't know why they're playing this game but whatever um, if you look at the rating agencies in China they call it the Dagong <laughs> that's the name of it the Gong rating agency it rates the United States, you know, downgraded the United States to like double A from triple A and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, that was a big headline over here, especially in the alternative media. But if you look at, I, I'm not going to display what they rate, you know. I don't know if that's, it's probably public information. I could display it anyway. I'm just going to tell you what it is. But uh, on a Dagong rating agency in uh, China, they don't have anybody as triple A in the whole entire world. Nobody except China except China see you know what that's a BS rating agency too you know I think people ought to keep the other things in perspective I know that there's stuff screwed up in the West and the rich rule in the world right they always have right they always have big deal it's not cool but uh, in China it's the same deal they got the elite run in China and China's gonna just play the game no matter what China does China's great because I could see the United States being de downgraded more or whatever a little bit because the debt situation is ridiculous, you know, and the deficit situation is ridiculous. But if you're looking at, would I buy Chinese bonds over like Canadian, Australian, or Norwegian? No, no way. But if you look at the Chinese rating agency, they have Canada's Canada rated lower, they have Australia rated lower, and they have Norway rated lower, Switzerland's rated lower, Finland's rated lower. 
it's ridiculous, you know. And, you know, you're looking at countries that are commodity-rich countries like Canada, Australia, Norway is commodity-rich because of the North Sea oil, which is dwindling, but it's still, you know, it's still a very strong resource of theirs. And their fiscal responsibility that's been proven over a long period of time. China's relatively new to the game, this, you know, this new financial world, world game that goes on. Um... You know, for them to rate those countries below theirs or not even on equal status is ridiculous. So, you know, beware of the BS stories coming out there about, uh, you know, China rates. And you know what's interesting, too? China's not going to rate the U.S. too much further down. I think they did that only when the S&P rated it down. And actually, the S&P... Um, did a update in July of this year, but it was just basically they, they reaffirmed their negative outlook for the USA. But China's shrewd game is this. They're going to go ahead, and uh, what, they're, what they're playing right now is they're buying U.S. debt, U.S. dollars, and they're giving them their Chinese yuan in exchange to other countries. They're not going to be, I don't think they're going to be buying anything from the U.S. Treasury at all. So to me, that spells the end of the dollar, period. Now, I'd like to see that valuation in silver go way to hell up. But, you know, I wouldn't like to tell people to keep saying, I would never want to tell a person, your only safety in the world is going to be in silver. I think that's rotten financial advice. It's a game I'm playing heavily because I'm a speculator. I think... If you got the patience, silver's actually going to probably play out and be a super duper investment. But I wouldn't tell like the average person to put dump most of their money or all their money in silver. That's their only safety. I think that's rotten advice. But what I would tell the average person to do is buy 10 ounces of silver, take lunch to work for a freaking month, you know, scrimp. <laughs> it won't cost you anything because most of these people go out to lunch and they spend 10 15 bucks on lunch and garbage like that like nothing and it's garbage food anyway which kills you and uh buy 10 canadian maple leaves four nines nine 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 that can also make colloidal silver in a pinch if you had to you can take one of those coins cut it up bend it a certain way and you have two heavy strips of silver that can make probably 2,000 gallons of colloidal silver either way you're never going to lose in fact, that it's 4.9 silver. I wish I bought all Canadian. I do. Now I'm like, God, I don't know. Next time, if I actually see silver go up to $70, <coughs> I'm going to get rid of, like, buffaloes and stuff like that. And if I see it go down below 50 guess what I'm buying? Canadian maple leaves all the way. That's the only stuff I'm going to buy. I think Lindsey Williams is flat out wrong about the American Silver Eagle. They have to have buy the American Silver Eagle and all this kind of garbage like that. That's the only, that's the one to buy. I don't know about that. To me, you know, if it's coming from a mint, I think that's it's got some premium value there that's worth it. But it could be even from the Austrian mint, the, the mint, the Philharmonica could even be pretty good, right? I mean, it's from a mint, you know, it's good. But um, I personally, I would tell everybody in the world to buy, well, even three ounces, even three Canadian maple leaves, even that much. That would take a lot of silver off the market, but they're not going to lose because with Canadian maple leaves, um, that four nine silver is probably going to actually command more of a premium. Don't you don't need to get cougars or mooses or timber wolves I mean yeah that's speculative do what you want I mean I'm not saying that but I'm saying for the average person a can't lose bet buy like three to ten ounces of Canadian maple leaves you can't lose because you can always make colloidal silver out of that and you can make a hell of a lot of colloidal silver out of that and if you even don't even want to use that to drink it internally it's a great disinfectant for external you can use it for medicinal purposes better than iodine it doesn't sting and it's good to have an emergency supplies. You can think of it as emergency medical supplies. So, but people doing that, if all the people did just three to ten ounces, <laughs> the silver market would probably go way the hell up. And they would regret not buying, the, you know, all their money putting in it. But 
I think that's a safe thing to say, and uh, not to go 100%, but everybody should buy a few ounces.